Good day, brothers and sisters. This is the Daily Mana Extract for the 11th of January, 2022. Shall we pray? Our Father, we worship and bless your name because you are the mighty God. You are the all-powerful God. You are the man of war. Lord, there is no problem you cannot solve. There is no situation in our life you cannot intervene. Lord, I pray today as we take this weapon of our warfare we shall quench all the fairy darts of the wicked in the name of jesus at the end of the day lord victory shall be ours in jesus mighty name i pray amen we're considering the topic divine weapon divine weapon our text is taken from exodus chapter 4 verse 18 to 26 and Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren, which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go return into Egypt, for all the men are dead, which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will add in his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. We we'll stop here because of time. A key verse is in verse 20. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. John F. Kennedy a former president of the United States, was quoted to have said, quotes, The weapons of war must be abolished before they abolish us. He was assassinated by a gunman with a rifle fitted with a telescope. The use of physical weapons by the unregenerates results in unjustified destruction, but divine weapons are designed to accomplish God's holy purposes. From our text, Moses set out on his mission as God's prophet to liberate the Jews from the Egyptian bondage. He was not dressed like a musketeer. Musketeer is a foot soldier armed with weapons. Neither did he set up a camp to train an army of liberators. Nor was there any need for mercenaries. He went as a family man with his wife and two sons. He only took a rod rode on an ass on a journey of faith to confirm the scripture that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strong oaths god had given moses all the assurances with all questions answered and all excuses and doubts removed moses was now ready to ride on in the strength of the lord at 80 he had overcome the immaturity and infirmities of his youth. He now knew better. Never would he run ahead of God again, though he was convinced all along that he was the chosen one to liberate Israel. He had seen the fire of his youthful exuberance ebb, ebb out when he made the first attempt to save Israel. 40 years earlier we need not hurry but wait for god follow his method use only the weapons he prescribes and the way he directs us it is there that victory is certain thoughts for the day god's weapons 
always guarantee victory. Amen. Many believers are ignorant of the spiritual battle that is going on against their soul. And this is why the devil takes advantage of them. As we look at some families today, some Christian homes, you see the problems, the challenges, the difficulties, the delays, the afflictions in those families. And you begin to wonder, why are these things continuing in these families? Many of them are ignorant. The life is spiritual. Life is a battle. Second Corinthians, I want to read from chapter 2, verse 11 lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Ignorant of Satan's devices leads to defeats, failure, spiritual bankruptcy. And you see that many challenges, difficult situations will begin to befall a family, a Christian, that is ignorant of the devices of the devil. Every believer needs to be conscious of the desire of Satan to make him or her stumble and backslide. John chapter 10 verse 10 tells us that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and to destroy first peter first peter chapter 5 and in verse 8 the bible says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour seeking whom he may destroy the devil will want to make the believer compromise his stand so that he can be able to deal with that believer. This is the battle and he uses various weapons to accomplish his purpose in the life of some ignorant Christians and those who don't know how to fight on their knees. Satan uses weapons like deception to deceive many believers. He uses weapons like defilement. He knows that when you are defiled, he could easily get you, destroy your destiny. He uses weapons like disobedient to the words of the Lord to get a believer. He uses weapons like diseases and sicknesses to weaken the believer doubt and unbelief he uses this weapon discouragement and fear is also a weapon he uses demonic attack destruction and obstruction disappointment and difficulties whenever you see these things manifesting in the life of a believer in the life of a person these are the weapons of satan that he uses to bring confusion to bring kind of I mean I mean unbelief in the life of that Christian to make him feel as if God is not able to solve the problem of that family of that Christian preparation for this battle against our soul require the application of the principle that is revealed in the word of the Lord when the armor of God is taken when we take the old armor of God as we are counsel in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible tells us to put on, put it on, wear it, put on the old armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. When the old armor of God is applied and used properly, you have full protection and you'll be able to hold your ground against the enemy as you read the book of ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to verse 18 we see the seven pieces of armor seven weapons of spiritual warfare that can make a difference in the life of a believer seven pieces of the weapons of our warfare that can bring the victory in the life of a believer number one is the truth you see we should get about our loins with 
the truth our loins means our mind your mind must be saturated with truth that's a weapon we need today to combat the works of the devil he also talks about the breastplate of righteousness you know the breastplate covers the vital organ which is the heart your heart must be filled with righteousness when satan want to destroy a family he want to destroy an individual he pollutes the heart he bring defilement to the heart of that man so the breastplate of righteousness is a weapon we need against the wiles of the devil number three he say our food should be short with the preparation of the gospel of peace that is the word of god we use to reach out to others we walk in his word we speak speak his word we share his word we touch the heart of people with his word that is a weapon number four he talks about the shield of faith faith brings powerful results when we mix faith with the word of god in our mind in our hearts in our life you can withstand the onslaught of the devil number number six or number five you say the elements of salvation this is the doctrine of the world that brings balance to your life and keep you walking steady in the spirit salvation is important it gives you a standing in the kingdom it makes you to be a son in the kingdom a daughter in the kingdom if you are not born again how can you overcome the wiles of the devil number six the sword of the spirit the sword of the spirit is a defensive weapon it serves a defensive purpose this is intended to be used as an offensive an offensive weapon against the enemy the sword of the spirit helps you take back territories that belongs to you all what the enemy has taken from you with the sword of the spirit being an offensive weapon it makes you take territories all your opportunity that you've lost all those things the enemy robbed from you take away from you with the sword of the spirit you can get to the camp of the enemies and withdrew all the enemy have taken from you the bible say if you go to the house of the strong man and you want to destroy all that he has made there you want to take away the captive from him you must first of all bind the strong man you bind him with the sword of the spirit you use that sword against the works and the devices of the devil and you'll be able to conquer and overcome number seven is prayers you spend time in prayers this is also an offensive weapon it covers us it clothes us like a mantle prayer is an investment when you pray you invest in your life you invest in your family let's utilize these weapons and victory shall be sure in our life in the name of jesus there are some christians who are ignorant they don't know that without this weapon you cannot combat the works of the devil whatever you see happening physically today had been controlled spiritually and if you must add turn if you must overturn all you see happening physically in your life those things you don't want to see those things you don't want it to happen in your family in your life if you must turn it upside down you must go to the secret place of the most high god so that you'll be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked the bible tells us that they that wait upon the lord they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. As you believe the Lord, as you trust in the Lord this day, victory 
shall be yours in the name of jesus open your mouth and begin to pray at this time utilize that weapon seven weapon of our warfare with those seven weapons you can quench every wiles of the devil you can destroy the works of the devil open your mouth and begin to pray whatever the enemy has done in your life maybe it's destruction maybe it's devastation in your family whatever he has done maybe it's defilement in your life whatever he has done demonic attack depth and poverty disappointment difficulties begin to destroy the works of the devil open your mouth take enter into the place of the spirits walk against the powers of darkness destroy the works of the devil at the mention of the name of jesus every knee shall bow open your mouth and begin to decree decree their collapse decree the collapse of the powers of darkness decree the collapse of the kingdoms of the devil open your mouth pray take authority every delay in your life delay in marriage delay in your joy delay in your prosperity delay in getting a job destroy those delay whoever has been standing as an hindrance against your progress oh god arise arise and let the enemies be scattered pray pray fix pray fix you will receive in jesus name we pray father thank you because that sister is getting liberated this day that brother that family there is getting their deliverance this day i decree upon your word confirm it in their life let it be according as they have prayed and let it be according to their faith and according to your promises in the name of jesus thank you father in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.